G'day. Well, we've just finished a triple header. The second one for the season, we ended up in Qatar and it was a very interesting race weekend and I'm gonna share some of my observations with you in eight seconds time. Let's go straight to race day. Lewis Hamilton, of course, won. Max Verstappen could manage just second. But the real surprise packet was Fernando Alonso clinching third spot. A great result for him, and there was much celebration afterwards, both up on the podium and down in the paddock. All the Alpine crew were out the front of the hospitality suite celebrating with Fernando, and he was posing for photos with everyone and anyone. And it wasn't only Fernando celebrating, Esteban Ocon notched a fifth, which capped off a marvellous weekend for Alpine. Surfshark is a browser extension and an app that allows me to position my devices anywhere in the world. That allows me to use the internet as if I was in those countries. Another advantage involves Netflix. If I log on to America or the UK, I don't get Australian content anymore, I get what those markets provide, and that can open up a whole range of new content. If you're looking for a VPN, click on the link in the description, use the promo code KIM, and you'll get 83% off. Hang on, on top of the discount, you get an extra four months free. Four months! And there's a money back guarantee. Thank you, Surfshark. After the podium, the drivers go into a cool down room and it happens to be right outside of the media center. And as I was heading back from the track to the media center, I thought I'd hang around and just snap some photos of the drivers as they came out of that cool down room and went down to the media pen. We got Fernando out first, then Max, and Lewis was shielded by his bodyguard. Unfortunately, I missed that shot. But Max hung around for probably 30 seconds to a minute and posed for photos with a whole host of soccer people, football people, if you're a European or Brit. And then as the drivers got downstairs, I did notice that Lewis gave his press officer, Charlotte Davies, a hug on the way out to the media pen. Let's go back to an hour and a half before the race. I'm down in the paddock just looking for photo opportunities because it's quite a buzz. And uh, I happened to hear from the Sky Sports guys doing their intro that A, Max Verstappen, had got himself a five-place grid penalty, so I put a post up straight away about that. But I also heard that uh, David Beckham was there, and that was the first I knew of it. So I went scouring and I found the man. Look, I'll, I'll be honest, I love David. Uh, I photographed him before once in Bahrain, and I was very close to him. In fact, I got this lovely picture of Federica Maslin, who was... Uh, probably as smitten as I was. Maybe I was even more smitten. But yes, yesterday caught him uh, wandering the paddock with uh, the FIA hierarchy. And then he wandered down to the McLaren area. And I could see Lando out the front dressed in his race suit. So I figured there's probably gonna be a meeting of the two. Cause I understand that David Beckham actually uh, invited Lando to go and watch that game where he had his watch stolen going back a couple of months ago. Yes, David did uh, connect with Lando, had a chat with him there, and it was lovely to get these pictures. What I laughed about was that uh, Zach Brown took the opportunity to show David his tattoo, his one and only tattoo of the Monza track on his arm, and David sort of made a bit of a joke and said, oh, you could have done a bit more with it, and Zach's obviously mentioned the fact that uh, indeed it was quite painful. And David sort of looked at him and said, you're joking, aren't you? That's the best place to get a tattoo. And then he said, if you really want to feel some pain, Get one on the palm of your hand. That hurts. I also went out to cover the driver's parade and uh, this, look, there's a very small crowd in the main straight. I'm figuring probably around 7,000 people. And then there are a couple of stands around the track, but most of the track is devoid of spectators. It's a bit like Bahrain when you get around the back of the track. It's really just marshals and media following the sport out there. So I imagine the drivers get a whole lot of time with nothing to do but talk to each other before they get to the crowd again. On the grid. David Beckham was out there obviously, and he caught up with Jackie Stewart for a quick chat amongst others. He was very much in demand. Had a security guard, just keeping people at a polite distance. Pierre Gasly uh, had a visit from Helmut Marco from Red Bull, 10 minutes before the national anthem. I'm not sure what they were talking about, but uh, that was an interesting, probably 90 second chat that the pair had. Carlos, he put on his cool vest and uh, headed back to the garage for a quick wee. But they come back via pit lane and often there's nobody for meters behind them. And when you use a lens like a 600 mil, you get this lovely soft out of focus background and your driver is perfectly sharp. But earlier in the day, I hung around the Ferrari garage just prior to FP3 and captured Carlos running to the garage. He was running behind time. I also captured George Russell here wearing his cool suit. But it's fair to say that the photographs we get during the day at the track are not a patch on what we get at night. The track is stuck out in the middle of nowhere, although it's pretty easy to get to, unless you're George Russell's girlfriend, Carmen Montero Munt. She had uh, 
budgeted 15 minutes to get to the track, which normally is about fair from this area that I'm staying in now. However, the Amir had closed off uh, a lane or a freeway so he could get out there in no time. So instead of 15 minutes, she had well over an hour and a quarter for her journey and ended up getting there halfway through Q2. What I'm noticing more at these races is that more of the drivers are coming in without their mask, which make for far better photos. They put them on once they get to their hospitality suite, but just that entry allows us to get a, a cleaner, a better looking photo of both the drivers and their girlfriends. And I'm gonna go now to Pierre Gasly because he uh, arrived with his girlfriend, Katerina Brezhna, on Saturday and it was Katarina's first time at the track so there was a fair amount of interest in the social media post I put up on the Saturday morning in fact I think it was my third biggest post ever getting across to around 300,000 people and lots of positive comments but what you won't know is that just prior to that a cameraman was walking backwards following Pierre and Katarina and uh, fell over these flagpoles which are stuck in the middle of the walkway and uh, I think he did himself a little bit of damage and Pierre actually asked me afterwards how is he and I did try and find the gentleman I think he was a local cameraman I believe he's okay but he certainly felt it and I think so did his kit on the subject of girlfriends which drivers had their girlfriends with them well uh, Valtteri Bottas once again had Tiffany Cromwell I mentioned Carmen, George's girlfriend, and also Esteban Ocon's girlfriend, Elena Berry, was there. And uh, all th two of those three featured in my Women of the Paddock post on Monday after the race. And on the Sunday, Pierre and Katerina came down these stairs, which is such a lovely backdrop. And I actually captured Moko there earlier in the day. You might not know of Moko. Moko is an intriguing character from Senegal and uh, was always in the paddock. Of course, uh, no one was really in the paddock for 2020. And uh, this was the first race I've seen him this year in his colorful outfit, once again, making his presence felt in the world of Formula One. As you know, there's one Australian driver in the field of 20, but there is a new Australian driver who's going to be the reserve driver for Alpine next year. That's Oscar Piastri. And on the Friday, this is Alex videoing the presentation of a packet of Tim Tams to the young Australian in the garage. Now, Tim Tams, for anyone who doesn't know, is a legendary Australian biscuit, and I also believe quite popular in New Zealand. But uh, I asked Oscar who got to eat them, and he said, no, they're still in his luggage. That was as at uh, Sunday afternoon. Maybe they're eaten by now, I would hope so, because they don't last that long, especially in a warm climate. But uh, yeah, it was a nice piece from um, the Alpine crew. And still on the subject of Oscar, I caught him and Alain Prost chatting in the paddock. An old dog teaching a young pup some tricks about Formula One. Oscar did quite a lot of media on the weekend. And if and when he gets a seat in F1, he'll be grateful he's had that experience uh, with the media. Esteban Ocon uses a foam memory pillow, much like mine. Where's mine? No, it's down there on the floor. And this is his trainer, Tom Clark, bringing in that pillow on the Sunday. Are you a Carlos Sainz fan? On the Saturday night after qualifying, he stopped and had a chat with Lando and his manager, uh, his press officer, Zach Brown, in a lovely little group near the media pen, and the exchange lasted a minute or so, and there was much laughing and carrying on. The pair are still good friends, and that's lovely to see, and, and Carlos wore the same pair of white pants every day of the GP. There was a fair amount of interest on Sunday in Max's presentation to the stewards, which happened uh, around one o'clock, I think it was. But interestingly, instead of walking from his hospitality suite or garage right up the paddock to the steward's office, which is just outside the paddock, he went the short distance to the middle swipe gates, got in a car and drove the 300 metres to the steward's office and then drove back afterwards. I'm not sure why. Might have saved him a minute or two's time. Uh, I got shots of him leaving and arriving back into the paddock. And of course, a short time later, it was announced that he got a five place grid penalty. I found these two having a chat at some point over the weekend and it reminded me of a similar photo I had taken going back to Spa a number of years ago and so obviously these two get on quite well, enjoy catching up with each other and this is one of the rare shots where Kimmy does not have sunglasses on. Lewis Hamilton fashion wise this is what he was wearing on both Saturday and Sunday. Thursday and Friday he was a bit cagey couldn't find him on Friday, or well, in fact I saw him come in, but then he quickly darted behind the hospitality suites and went all the way down the back, the, uh, the ugly route where we can't get access to. And I'm thinking, was that because he was wearing this new helmet and he wanted perhaps not to distract away from 
that helmet which had the multicolor rainbow and promotes tolerance and that's something I know he's passionate about especially in these particular markets where I think you'd agree the governments of these countries can be a little bit harsh. If you've liked the video please click the like button, subscribe if you haven't done so and become a member. And remember that I'm giving away a couple of tickets to the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. If you're watching this video on release, your last chance to enter is Tuesday the 23rd of November. The winner is announced on the 24th, so get in for your chance. So head to my Instagram page, which is at Kim Elman, and look for the posts regarding the competition. You'll find all of my digital images available for sale at ProStarPix.com for editorial and personal use. And if you want to order any of my F1 driver photo books or a calendar, if you order before December 2 this year, you'll get them for Christmas. Thanks for watching and stay passionate.